Magdalena Bay Imaginal Disc Album Review. Let's chat about it. Hey friends, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning here tonight to chat about this second full-length album from Florida-based progressive pop duo Magdalena Bay. Uh, for the last few years, these two have been some of the freshest faces uh, in pop music. Whether it be a little rhythm and a wicked feeling early on that was super peppy and groovy or their crowd favorite mini-mixes, they've been making waves for quite some time now. And they certainly put themselves on the map with their debut album, Mercurial World, as well. Uh, honestly, this thing caught me off guard. I mean, I loved it, but a lot of people really, really loved it. It ended up being on a lot of critics' year-end lists. It is just so sleek and so effortlessly cool. Very quickly, it feels like these two are one of the most interesting new faces in pop music. Now, leading up to this album, I thought they'd been dropping just great single after great single. And this is just a Another great helping of weirdo pop music from them. She Looked Like Me kicks this album off, and let me tell you right off the bat, I feel like the duo are really cooking with gas. This is a pretty wild and stark start. Instantly, it just feels like Magdalena Bay are starting up an old computer and bringing you into their world. But it's really epic. It does a great job of making you feel like you're going to experience something big. It's charming and it's sweet, but it's also anxious in its own skin. And little details like the backing synths that are just constantly swirling or some of the samples in the background as well. It's a really exciting start. Killing Time, on the other hand, kicks up the charm a little bit. This was a bouncy, tender track full of love-struck lyrics and charming vocals. It's honestly adorable, even though it's not the wildest, most colorful track that I've ever heard from these two. But I don't need that constantly. This is just a really great piece of modern pop. Also, really love True Blue Interlude. I mean, in a time where I feel like a lot of interludes don't hit me, maybe as hard as they did in an earlier time, uh, this one does a lot for the record. It's majestic. I love the spoken word performance here. The synth work is great. And it just adds so much to this already great aesthetic of this record. Also, image. I mean, wow, what a, what a freaking single this is. Of all of them, it's the one that I've listened to the most. I feel like this is the two of them on a different level entirely. The dance groove that we get here, the way that this track builds and progresses is wild. This track is just infinitely creative. And man, overall, this is just one of the more exciting pop singles I've heard this year. And Death and Romance is absolutely stellar. My thoughts on this really hasn't changed that much since it dropped as a single. This is a glimmering, glistening, shiny new disco-fusing track. Everything about it from the production to the piano hook or the swirling synths is absolutely money. It's also a great example of what the band can do uh, with a sort of longer track. This one's almost six minutes. Also, watching TV for a sort of lighter, fluffier sound from the band actually comes off awesome. It's wonderfully sweet and sounds like it could take off at any minute. I love the whisper quiet vocals here and just how dedicated Magdalena Bay are to just putting together the atmosphere of this record. It also opens up into a completely shimmering, gorgeous tune. I also just really love Mika's vocals performance here. It's awesome. Now, this is a long album, and with that, you know, you definitely get a little bit more opportunities to slip up, and they do a little bit. Not too much, though, thankfully. Like Fear Sex, for example, this one's just not my cup of tea. It's a little bit too light and airy for me, which they do a lot better later on in the record. As a matter of fact, the atmosphere of this tune really does align. I just feel like the songwriting here is really lackluster, as is just the performances in general. On such a vibrant, colorful album, it's just a little middle of the road for me. And Vampire in the Corner is not for me either, honestly. And listen, there's always been a little bit of a bubbly flirtiness with the music of Magdalena Bay. And that's fine, but this track is just way too light on the ears. Like, it sounds like if the lightest breeze possible picked up, this thing would just blow away. Also, Love is Everywhere it is more grating than anything to me. I mean, I appreciate just how bright and sunny this track is, but it's just not my cup of tea. It's not where I like hearing the duo. And because of that, I feel like everything just falls apart. I'm not as into Mika's performance on this track. But outside of that, I mean, modern pop is in such great hands right now. Tunnel Vision also really loved this, has loved it since it dropped as a single. This is just such a playful, just fun tune that sounds like it can go in a hundred different directions. It is just so elegant, and tracks like this are some of my favorites from the band, where they can bring in a groove that'll make you move, but also uh, hit you right in the feels with some emotional lyrics. Yeah, it's a fantastic track. Also, really love feeling disc inserted. It's short, but has a lot of drama and passion. I mean, God, they really, really nailed the singles on this album. I mean, That's My Floor is also so good. 
is a glistening swagger filled odyssey that just hits home and of all the singles this is probably the most straightforward but i don't think that's a bad thing just because of just how catchy and fun and bubbly it is cry for me might be my favorite deep cut i mean i really want to just hear them go more in this sort of new disco direction it sounds so good this is an absolutely glistening groovy track with really memorable bass line. It's a little sexy and flirty and I really do love the synth work again. Yeah, good luck sitting still with this one. It sounds like Magdalena Bay just throwing everything at a wall, but the result is really exciting. Angel on a Satellite is absolutely adorable. It's just so laid back and full of love and passion. And yeah, it's not one of the wilder or more vibrant tracks here. But man, they bring the passion. I mean, Mika's vocals on this track may be her best here. And the ballad of Matt and Mika is just a fantastic finale. It's just pensive enough and it just sounds like uh, the finale they should have went with here. The production is stellar. The instrumental is instantaneous and, you know, very welcoming, but it also has its quirks. And the synth work on this as a finale is one of the best examples of it here. This overall is just another really great record from them. I mean, I don't know really how I, you know, Know, match it up to the debut album but man they are firing on all cylinders and cooking with gas right now the singles alone are some of the best pop singles you're going to hear this year they are some serious toe tappers and yeah uh this album is a little long in parts i feel like there's a lot of material here 15 tracks in almost an hour and you know there's a couple of tracks where they do slip up but overall i feel like pop's in really good hands right now i'm feeling a light eight on this record but let me know what you all think down below if you like the video be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, friends.